Well, hello collectors. Here we are again. Uh, I think we're on number um, 147 DTC. Is that right, Ob? I think so, yeah. I think it's 147. Well, I don't know. I hope you're all doing well. Uh, here we are, our usual uh, morning time here. and uh, Too early for a drink, but I think we ought to have one. What do you think, Ob? Sure. Absolutely right. Why not get started? And, Looks like uh, you got your, uh, your your Johnny Cash outfit on today, huh? You just need a big hat. Yeah, well, <laughs> not really, but uh, if you want to say that, I guess you could. Nobody's aware to wear, allowed to wear any black today without it being Johnny Cash. It just so happened it was the only shirt that was fairly clean. <laughs> All right, let's see here, uh, and a little uh, little wham in there, Rob. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Got a little to get to on here. Yes, sir. Well, we're pretty well calmed down from the uh, from the Maxo now, and uh, and uh, we didn't we didn't get a lot of things that came in this week, but we'll. We'll show you what we got, and I, I hope there's something interesting. I don't know, but uh, there usually is, but we'll see. So, here's to you guys. Mm. Ah, whew. Wow, a little too strong there for <laughs> this hour of the morning. Um, I've got a, uh, got a nice email. From a lady in, uh, in Europe. In England, and um, she um, she's a um, uh, a female collector, and um, she's just wondering uh, if I can't say a little bit more about uh, female collectors because there's a lot more of them than uh, you guys realize. Uh, I know I'm always saying, "Okay, guys, here we go." With the next thing, "Okay, guys," and once in a while get an email. How about including us girls in that remark too? So okay guys and girls. And I want to just um, just read this. It's a short thing. Uh, I should say ladies actually. Huh? Ladies. Ladies, yes. <laughs> ladies. Yeah, we should say ladies. She says, uh, hello Debbie. I would like to pass on to Mr. Whitman and Ob how much I enjoy the unboxing videos. Oh, that's good. Yeah, that's good. I live in England and watch every one. I have no problem with the drinking and smoking. Uh, on DCT 146, people complaining about saying nasty things. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in now. Well, I don't uh, worry about that, but we have an off button if that offends them. I appreciate when he includes us ladies. I know it is mostly men, but we do collect as well. Here are a few pictures of a little, but of what I collect. Carry on for us people that love the videos. And her name is uh, Tina Wood, and uh, she sent a couple of pictures that we can we can show you here. Uh, you can see in the uh, in the picture that she's uh, she got a got a lot of nice swords there. Yeah. And a couple of cabinets with things displayed in it. There's an HJ pennant there and stuff. Uh, uh, I see some porcelain here. And maybe we'll see some more in the next picture. Yeah, there's a picture of her porcelain. That looks like a Munich maid, doesn't it, Ob? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, nice, uh, nice swords. And also you can, oh, oh there's some kind of, a, it looks like an SS belt up there. Yeah, it sure does. Yeah, and a nice, um, boy, that looks like a railway porcelain or something so you're doing pretty good Tina uh, keep up the great work and uh, I hope that you're enjoying the hobby and uh, uh, and you're right we have to give more more credit to the ladies here and I apologize uh, for not doing that so much in the past and I'll try to improve myself in the future okay all right Tina Hope to hear from you if I can help you at all with anything. So we'll get to the unboxing here. Mm -hmm. 
Got my Bob Burns cutter. Hope it's a sharp one. Doesn't look too sharp, but we'll see. <laughs> I don't think we have that many boxes to worry about. So. Well, yeah, we don't have many boxes. Uh, I think before I open a box, I'll I'll show this uh, this sword that came in. I think it's kind of a kind of an interesting sword, and a lot of you guys will like it. Um, it's a um, it's a model 89, 1889 uh, infantry type with the um, with the clamshell that uh, that folds inward, um, and the hilt, I guess, is in pretty good condition. It just needs a little cleaning. It's kind of dirty, uh, but I thought what was really interesting about the sword, uh, first of all, on the reverse of the blade, the blade of which is in mint condition, uh, it has the um, uh, a figurehead of the Kaiser. Uh, and what does it say? Mit got, mit got, and I can't read what it says there, Rob. What's it say after mit that? Got, mit got, mit got for, I got for Kaiser Reich. Kaiser Reich. Okay, so God for the for the Reich. And then on the uh, on the opposite side, which is really really interesting, uh, you'll see that there's um, there's two skulls. Uh, which flank uh, this inscription, um, which is uh, Regiment Number 17 uh, from um, it's that's from Braunschweig, and that was the uh, elite regiment during the Imperial time uh, that um, uh, they used the uh, the skull on their uh, pickle halb helmets and so forth, and it's a very famous uh, famous regiment. Uh, so a sword like this is not very commonly seen, uh, and I think it's uh, I think it's really interesting. Uh, oh, the first word is Hussar, Hussar Regiment sure, Number Seventeen. Yeah. That's Mackinson, right? Was he, wasn't he in that? He time? was a Hussar. Yeah. yeah. Now, is it is that pre SS? You think they took it from there? Uh, it's a good possibility, but the you death's know, head. S death's heads were used by yeah. a, a lot of armies and a lot of centuries. The pirates used it, even <laughs> all, all kinds of people did. But it it may be that that the SS took it from the uh, Brunswick uh, hussars. But um, either way, that's a uh, that's a very good uh, very good blade there. Now, let me get the back again real fast. Just okay. Lay it flat. Who's the maker on it? Do you know? Uh, I don't think there is one. No, there yeah. is none. No. There's nothing there. Yeah. Okay. But I don't remember having a um, a Braunschweig uh, 17 hussar sword. Yeah, you got like everything with a skull on it. I'll tell you that much. Hmm. No, that's a rare one. Yeah, it is. I think they had a, a peninsula on their uh, their death's head. Uh, uh, pickle halva too. Peninsula was a big war that they did very very well I think going back to uh, uh, Napoleon's time, but I'm not sure But at any rate a good collectible piece there. That I thought you guys would like to see Probably made about uh, I don't know 1912 something like that. So not bad at all All right, we'll get the We'll get the Bob Burns cutter to work here and on the first box and this one's coming from uh, the guy that seems to send us something every week from Orville, California. Um, like I said last week, I think he's kind of just buys stuff and sells it to me and hopefully makes money. I guess that's what he does, but, uh, but I appreciate it because he sent in a lot of, uh, a lot of pretty good things. So let's see what we got here. He sent in some things that weren't so good either, too, I remember, but <laughs> <laughs> mostly pretty good things. I think we did have to return a railway buckle once it was no good, and maybe one or two other things, but overall, yeah, he's the person that sent us that great um, officer, police officer's uh, Shaco in last video. Remember that, guys? So he comes across some pretty good things. Let's see what we got here. 
pretty heavy, whatever it is. Looks like some kind of bronze ob. Well, how about this? Well, I like this a lot. What do you think of? Is, is that not a Hitler Youth drummer? Huh. Sure looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah, let's take a look here. Yeah, kind of reminiscent of the Olive piece. Yeah. Yeah, he's got an overseas cap on it and uh, he's got something on his sleeve that I can't quite make it out. I just think it's it's a it's a it's a drummer, uh, and I don't think it's uh, Hitler Youth. Though. The drum would be different. Yeah, I don't know. He looks like he has a Hitler Youth out. Oh, wait a minute! Okay. I see one Sigrin on the belt loop. It is. Uh, it's a DJ. It's a DJ. See oh, that? Okay, yeah. Look see at that? that. Look at that. There you go. Let's see if I can get that. Isn't look, that something? That's a tight shot. Yeah, and the drumsticks are still intact and. Yeah, that's really a nice bronze. I've never seen that one before. And He's got something on his arm, but I can't make it out. Yeah. Looks like something here. It's not really an armband either. No, right? no. Can you uh, flip it over? See if there's a maker mark or a maker on the bronze? or no. uh, Just the old uh, mm -hmm. felt. Uh, but that's a that's a really nice original thing, which would go great with the uh, sure. with the youth collection. That that uh, there's no mistaking that uh, DJ runes on the buckle. Let me just like look at the back. Sometimes there's a signature. Maybe not on this though. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Heavy. Yeah, I like that. Never seen it before. Maybe some of you guys have, but I haven't. And, uh, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, that's a that's a great. You sure, thing. that's it. That's it. Okay. Just one thing. Uh, uh, I I have to say I like that one. That's great. All right. Mm. Ah. So we'll see what's next. Yeah, how about that? A, a youth DJ drummer. Let's see what we got here. The best way to open this up. Uh, let me try this method here. This is coming from. Uh, where's it coming from? Spencerport, New York. I think that's near Rochester. See what we got here. Yes, sir. Think we got some good bubble wrap. There you go. Hey, Ob. Looks like a free undershirt here, and it's actually <laughs> clean. That's great. <laughs> uh, we get a lot of that stuff, guys. Well, that's good though. It looks like a nice clean shirt. And what the heck? Good padding. Well, we got a bayonet here. Wow. Bayonet's in nice condition. With a uh, with a really nice uh, brown frog. Yeah, the frog's spectacular. Yeah, frog is terrific, and uh, the scabbard is. Uh, yeah, it's in great condition. Is really nice. Yeah, that, that's a. Uh, that's a choice bayonet. Let's see the back of the. Oh, it's marked here, 1941 uh, DFC. I'm not sure what that is, but uh, DFC. I don't know. It maybe it has something to do. Oh, let's see what the bayonet is. Oh boy. Okay. Here you go, guys. Oh, it's not DFC. It's DRP. DRP. Yeah. Uh, that was the. Uh, Postal Service uh, with a serial number uh, and um, on the reverse, ah, it's made by Paul Wiersberg. This is the later trademark that Wiersberg used after 1941. Uh, and with postal bayonets, they're they're really quite rare. 
uh, and I've only seen them made by Wiresburg and Alcozo. Uh, they seem to be the only two, uh, two producers of these bayonets. Uh, but boy, this is a, this is a rare bird, and uh, for those of you that collect bayonets, uh, this is really a tough one. Do they usually have a brown frog? I don't know that. Don't know I don't that. know okay. that. Uh, and I don't know whether DFG... Is it DFG is, or is it D... It's, it's maybe D, no, a it's finance D, thing or yeah, something. It's D, it says DFC. I don't know whether that has something to do with the... Uh, it could be the frog maker. No, I think it's probably just the producer of the frog. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe some of you guys out there can tell us whether these two uh, parts belong together. But, uh, boy, it certainly does look good together, though, doesn't it? Sure does. And the... Uh, see how it seems to... It's like it's been there for a yeah. long time. <laughs> see that? So it's not something that was put on there yesterday. Yeah, the same thing here. There's a shadow over where the frog ends. So more than likely, that's the um, that's the original frog. Anything uh, on the to throat? The postal bayonet. Yeah, is there something on the throat there? Uh, I don't think so, Ob. No. no. No, but you got a good eye for that Let stuff. I tend to miss that kind of thing quite yeah. often. No, there's nothing there. But boy, that's one uh, one rare bayonet that uh, I'll bet's missing from most collections. It looks like the anything yeah, on the spine, blade. anything on the uh, no, is there a no. felt? And the blade is easily in full mint condition. The original buffer on there. Is there a felt in the slot or anything? Or? No felt no, in the no slot, no. Okay. No. Push that button now. Maybe there's a number on the... Uh... Well, I can't push it that hard. Here, let me see. It's a little off-center. I wouldn't start pushing it. You're allowed to break it. Okay, I won't. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. Let me just see the maker again one more time. Yep, Paul Wiresberg. Hey, that's great. Yeah, that's a uh, that's a neat thing, neat piece. I don't know whether this undershirt will fit you or not, Ob. What do you think? Is that your size? I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. I like that. I just uh, I love getting stuff that we that we don't see too often, especially in the edge weapons. There we go on that. Now let's see what we got here next. Um, I guess this box. This box is coming from uh, uh, from Deutschland. Yep, right directly from from Germany. Went through the Frankfurt uh, post office, and it's uh, very well. Very well wrapped and uh, looks like it's everything's going to be fine, so we'll open it up and see what we got here. I, th I thought I heard the other day they found an, or an ordinance went off in a J at a Japanese airport from World War II. It actually went off. They didn't know it was there or something. I have to look more into it, but that's amazing. What, recently? Yeah, recently. Last week. It was still a live board oh, wow. at an airport, no less? Yeah. Wow, I didn't hear that one. Yeah, I gotta look that up again. Yeah, that sounds like Sitting in there for 80 years and then finally goes off and just... Yeah, well... Wow. Oh. Anybody get hurt or...? I don't know, I gotta look more into it. Okay. I guess if one of those... I know they find live yeah, ordnance in England once time. in a while yeah. too, Up. I guess when they drop them and if it's like all muddy or something, I think it'll just go straight down into the ground and just sit yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Uh, got some, some stuff here. It's a lot of paperwork, Pop. A lot of, a lot of paperwork and... Almost like a photograph or something. Yeah, it might be. Um, I guess we should see what it is first before we look at all this stuff. But wow, wow, this is a lengthy record of. A, uh, it looks like a. Uh, 
He's a uh, general by the name of Fritz Beierlein, General Lieutenant. Well, let's see what's, what's in here. Oh, it's well, well packed here, guys and girls. I'm sure the girls are better packers than these guys are, though, I'll bet you. Girls seem to be able to do this kind of stuff better than guys. Uh, let's see here. Now we're getting there. Let me get rid of this stuff and look at what we got here. Doing. This is damn fly. It's been bothering me for about a week. Oh. <laughs> I can't seem to get them. Huh? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, these flies can be tough. Let's see. We got a couple of nice bags here. Boy, this this item is really well packed, guys. Another a laundry bag. Yeah, that's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> In about five different languages. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're getting there, guys. <laughs> Boy, nothing's going to happen in this dagger. You can see that. You got a DJ knife in there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another laundry bag. Okay. Wow. Well, here we have a. Uh, a beautiful um, Robert Klass dagger. Um, look at look at the detail in the eagle. It's not fantastic. Yeah, that, yeah. Boy, that is really well done. Um, Robert Klass, uh, uh, especially on their earlier pieces, uh, did a lot of extra work. Yeah, sure did. And the pommel. Look how nice that's done too. Uh, and then on the reverse, we have the Monogram FB. Okay, and let's see what's on the, the blade, if anything. Well, the blade's got a lot of oil on it, uh, but it looks like one of those um, um, nickel-plated examples. I hate to get, get this uh, messed up. Maybe I'll use the black piece. That won't show so much. Let's see what we got here a little bit. Yeah, look at their perfect uh, mint mint blade underneath. Yep, we'll just we'll just clean that oil off. And um, okay, so assumedly um, uh, Fritz Beierling is the uh, is what the initials uh, stand for. Um, I don't know how uh, this is all tied in with him. Uh, because it's all in, uh, all seems to be in, uh, in German. It might be right from the family. It probably is. Um, let's see, he was, um, he was a general lieutenant in the 3rd Panzer Division. Uh, he was involved in the uh, invasion of Poland, uh, the Battle of Alam Halva and the Ardennes Offensive, and he won the Knight's Cross with oak leaves and swords. Wow. Wow, that's something. Uh, he was, um, he initially served as a staff officer with Erwin um, Rommel in the Africa Corps, Africa Corps. So he was, uh, he was quite a, uh, quite a well-known general, apparently. Um, I'll have to see uh, from the uh, from the sender, how uh, the EB is definitely uh, tied into Fritz Beierlein. It's FB, not EB. We shall see. FB, yeah. Is that what I said? No. No. Fritz Beierlein. <laughs> so um, it looks like uh, they've done a lot of lot of research on this officer. It should be pretty interesting and. 
It'd be nice to have a set of General's hang hangers with it, but I guess not. Now, let's just see if these things have anything that ties it in with the... Oh, he says, uh, enclosed his dagger and set of hangers. Aha. Uh -huh. See? Know where, the, where the hangers are. Probably in the box. No, here they are. Uh, see that? Yeah. Oh. See that? You never know. Oops. They're general hangers, too. See that? I knew it yeah. all along. Um, <laughs> there we go. There's yeah. a set of general hangers. The, the gilding has faded a little bit, but you can see everything was... Uh, Definitely gilded at one time. Yeah, that's a lot of the gilding remains in the inner parts of the. Wow. Heavy leather tops, too. Yeah, really nice. Why don't you flip them over for me, Pop? Yeah. Well, good. I'm glad the hangers are with it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can see the gold where it didn't yeah. wear on here. and It's just what you want to see, really. Yeah, just what you want to see. You don't want it to be gaudy, you know? Yeah. I well, that sense uh, for these things. You do, Ob. You definitely <laughs> do. Yeah, yeah look at that dagger, though. Isn't that yeah, a that's beauty? That's a great piece. That is really a, that really Klaus a, uh, cross cool. guard is just amazing. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, that's a real piece apparently, of Apparently, uh, Byerling ordered this dagger early on because it, that's an early dagger before he was a, uh, a general, I would think. Um, it says here he, uh, he was Chief of Africa Corps, Chief of Staff at the Af Africa Corps. Um, and there is an original certificate by Nikolai von Lindenau, who used to be a world-class military dealer in the 80s in Munich. And uh, I guess that's what uh, some of this thing is, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, uh, he's going on that, um, uh, thanks for the copy of the 1987 letter from Von Lindenau, that is perfect provenance for the Byerling class army dagger. And I assume this, um, uh, this letter uh, from uh, this man is here somewhere. I wonder if he made it through the war or not. Well, that, that should be easy enough to find out. Uh, I don't know. But it, uh, this is a, a very, very important, important dagger here. Um, yeah, after the war, Byerlin was a prisoner from April 1945 through April 1947. During this time, he and many other generals in Allied um, captivity uh, wrote the European battle histories for the United States Army Historical Division. Byerlin was released in 19. 47. He died in 1970. He is credited as a technical advisor for the 1961 film The Guns of Navarone. We've seen that up a lot of times. Sure. Yeah. So here we go guys. I think we have something here that's a very uh, very important uh, dagger. Um, uh, for those of you that, uh, that like uh, things that can be um, unconditionally uh, named to an officer. Uh, this one appears um, at the very, very top here. Uh, a very fine dagger that apparently has been known uh, since the 80s. So that's good. So I'll look through all this stuff and uh, uh, translate what I have to and uh, make sure that uh, all the uh, provenance um, rings true with the dagger. Uh, although I have no reason, uh, no reason to doubt it, but uh, uh, it's quite a uh, quite a piece for the advanced um, collector. All right, Pop. I need another drink. Well, collectors, <laughs> yeah, we. I think we both do here. Uh, mine's kind of watered down. It's kind of warm in here today. We've got these uh, sort of fall temperatures where the air conditioner doesn't go on and the heater doesn't go on and the temperature that it stays is always too hot. I don't know why that is. It's stuffy, yeah. Yeah, stuffy I guess is the word for it. We need a little pop here. Yeah, sun's going down earlier now, long shadows. Yep, all that stuff. All that stuff. Yeah. 
think my drink's probably too strong, but I'll live through it with any luck. We got the Allentown show coming up soon, a couple weeks. Yeah, what uh, what date would that be? Uh, uh, it's the um, the 19th and the 20th, I believe. The 19th and the 20th mm -hmm. of October, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a good show, guys. It, uh, there's a lot of military there and uh, a lot of guns, too, but I'm, I'm sure you would enjoy it if you've never been there. It's called the Forks of the Delaware, and uh, you can look it up on the Internet under that name, Forks of the Delaware. Um, Ralph and I, we usually go just on Friday afternoon during the setup and try to try to buy what we can so we're not there on Saturday and Sunday, but I think you guys can do a show without us being there. I think that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, so we got another thing that uh, that I've had around here that uh, I haven't put up on the on the site yet. And it's a, uh, a pretty nice um, wood box uh, with a, um, a leather covering, uh, and it has the uh, uh, the hunting insignia uh, on the face of it. Uh, so as you can uh, imagine, it has something to do with hunting, and we will show you uh, the one the one uh, clip is broken here, but uh, but look at that, guys! Wow. <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? I think it's really a beautiful, beautiful set. Um, these, uh, they're knives and forks, and uh, I'll take one out here so you can see it. All stag grip. Yeah. All, all stag grips on all the pieces, and they're made by a company. Uh, Otto called, von Stein. Yeah, that's what it looks like, Bob. Yeah. It's Soligen. Otto von Stein wow. from Soligen, and it's got an arm with a hammer as yeah, the logo. I like that, yeah. Mormon hammer over yeah. here. Yeah. But they're really quite beautiful. Yeah, that's uh, nice, Bob. And the forks. See there? I don't know if they got the maker on them too. Uh, no. I guess they really didn't have a place to put all that jazz. So they. Sometimes it's in the... Uh... Oh, I'll spill my drink. That's... No, don't do that. No, nah, nah, they're not on there. Still a nice set. Yeah, I think it's quite, quite beautiful and... Um, uh, in very very nice condition. They show a little bit of age. There's a little rust here and there, but uh, but overall they're they're quite beautiful. And uh, we have what uh, it's complete too. We got one, two, three, four, five, six knives and six forks. Quite nice indeed, I think. Uh, and what a what a beautiful display uh, it makes too with a yeah uh, with the case and some some uh, cutlasses next to it or whatever. That's the uh, highest quality stuff there. I have to look up this Otto von Stein. I never heard of them before. No, they I must didn't have been either. just cutlery for uh, it, DJ. That, that, that could have been. They may not have been in the uh, uh, the edge weapons business, but uh, yeah, we could look them up and see who they are. Anyhow, they're quite beautiful. Yeah, I think. That's nice. Yeah. So that's that's kind of a good thing that I like. And we got one more, one more box, guys. I told you we didn't get much in this week, but uh, I don't think you'll mind if it's a shorter video. Uh, now, how to get this open is a mystery to me here. Go across the back like that. Yeah. Maybe cut the end off. No, right here, from left to right, or right to left, right across this. Uh, right across here. Okay. Then do the sides. Yeah, you're right, Ob. That's easy. The Bob Burns is working pretty good. But just do the sides. There we go. Yeah, there's one. Let's see if I can do this right handed. I doubt it. Without cutting myself. Cut yourself a little bit. <laughs> Oh, made it. Have to use the Barry Smith band-aids. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look at there, Rob. You were right. That was the place to cut it. Well, let's see what we got here, guys. Let's 
Looks like a decent bag inside. Bag looks bigger than the box. Yeah, it just just fits perfectly. <laughs> Absolutely perfectly. Well, we'll see what's in here, guys. I hope it's something you like. I think you better want on your clocks, Pop. That thing's striking 12 and it's about 40 after. <laughs> oh. oh well. Uh, let's see what we got here. Guys and girls. Ladies and gents. Yeah, ladies and gents. Alright. Oh boy, here we go, Ob. There we go. Yeah, here we go. Well, let's see, we got... It looks like we got a, an early... Early chained SS with a um, with a Type 2 chain. Um, the knot this needs to be tightened up. Yeah, the knot kind of looks original to it. The way that it would had another loop probably around it, and that put it right over top of the uh, cross guard. Uh, there's a there's a couple of chips in the grip here that aren't so good. Oh, but, sorry. Uh, and a chip up here too. Uh, the grip is an early example with the early nickel eagle and uh, uh, nickel fittings, uh, cross guards. Uh, the um, the paint is pretty good. It's original. Shows a little crazy, but uh, overall it's not bad. Um, nice um, nice center ramp and a very very nice um, chain. Uh, this is the Type Two. Uh, but boy, it's uh, those chain links are really good. Look at the teeth on those skulls. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, they're really glaring out at you. Nice and dark. You yeah, know, nice background. and dark. And yeah. There's no DRGM on that, right? No, no, no not on this type. Yeah. These are the closed type. Yeah. Um, the screws are all unturned. Let's see what the back looks Original like. hanger too. So. Yeah, a uh, belt loop. Yeah, yeah that original belt loop hanger. Yeah. yeah, and there's the uh, the Coulter Zeichen with the light stamping, as we see on the Type Twos. The Type Ones, it's stamped in a little deeper than that. Um, and the paint's not bad on the reverse either. So, uh, not a bad piece. Um, it's a piece that we may want to consider uh, getting the chips and the grip fixed. Uh, that would make a uh, a big difference in uh, in this dagger. Now let's see what the blade looks like. Oh, all right. Well, that makes up for a lot. There we are. It's a very, very good blade. Excellent blade. Bright. Still has a cross graining in it. Yeah. And the uh, yeah, it's an unmarked unmarked piece. Uh, there's a couple of really light uh, uh, spots that I think will come out of there. I think that blade is just about mint. Just want to check the guards for the number. Or a yeah, the numbers or no, 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 nothing. No numbers no, anywhere. No spec on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but this is uh, uh, this is a nice. Um, it's a nice piece. Um, uh, the um, the chips in the grip are its shortcoming, uh, but as I say, we can we can have those um, have those repaired. And uh, once that's done, uh, uh, this is a, a very, very nice um, chained SS. Uh, early chained oh, SS. Uh, the bottom ball's got a little hit to it, but uh, well, that's the way it is sometimes. That's the but way it is, huh? but um, no, not a not a bad chained S dagger at all. Um, it's a shame about the grip chips, but. Uh, you can't uh, you can't help that kind of stuff happening yeah. over the years. It got mistreated or whatever, and there it is. Uh, it's not a bad looker, is it, Ob? Yeah, it's nice. Chain SS. Nice chain too. See the darkening in the back. Yeah, I like those chains. I just love when they're dark like that. Yeah. These, these are all nickel. Yeah. Everything's nickel and uh, uh, initial production. So no, that's uh, that's not a bad uh, not a bad chain S at all. Uh, and it will be uh, uh, really nice once the uh, grip chips are uh, are fixed. So we'll have that done, and I don't think there's any real any real sin there as long as you d disclose it. It's not a problem, and uh, 
I think I'd rather have a, a nice script that looks perfect than one with chips all over it. Wouldn't you guys? I mean, it's up to you. Some people know I'd rather have all the chips, but uh, uh, I like them better without the chips. Sorry. So there you go. That's, uh, I guess that's our Larry, Ob. That's all we have okay. today. And uh, uh, we, like I said, we didn't get a lot of stuff in, but uh, I think what we did have was uh, kind of interesting, a little bit anyhow. Hey, we got something in, that's all that counts. Got something <laughs> in, to keep us going another week. Yeah. Uh, so with that being said, again, don't forget Allentown, uh, the weekend of the October 19th. And uh, we'll see you again next week with another video. Thanks for watching. And, uh, and if I can help you with anything, uh, uh, send me an email or give me a call. Thanks a lot.